here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Nguyen Phu Chuang, Vietnam's Communist Party chief, started his official visit to China over the weekend. This is his sixth visit since 1992. China and Vietnam have remained close since the breakout of the COVID-19 in terms of vaccine and pandemic prevention supplies and have even increased the trade during this period. Against the backdrop of a volatile and ever-changing global situation, what does Nguyen Phu Chong's visit to China mean for bilateral ties? How will this visit shed light on the future cooperation between the two parties and beyond? Let's find out more in today's World Insight. For the Vietnamese leader's uh, visit to China in Tokyo, Lim Tian Wai, a senior research fellow from East Asian Institute from National University of Singapore. In Beijing, Song Qingren, associate professor from the School of Asian Studies with Beijing Foreign Studies University. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Now, Professor Song, what do you make of the party secretary's visit to China? Uh, this is quite a significant one, it seems, right after China wraps up the 20th Party Congress. Yeah, uh, it shows that uh, Vietnam uh, top leaders uh, place a lot of importance to uh, bilateral relations. Uh, I think it, it shows that uh, China, Vietnam takes a uh, uh, top priority uh, uh, with, uh, for China uh, in its uh, external relations. And uh, I think uh, this uh, visit will uh, sh uh, certainly uh, promote uh, bilateral relations to a new high level. We know that uh, uh, China and uh, Vietnam uh, has a very uh, positive and healthy relations in, in the past years. Uh, for several years, uh, uh, Vietnam has been the uh, largest tra trading partner in ASEAN countries uh, with China. And also, uh, we can see that uh, both uh, bilateral relations in the political and the economic and also culture and other fields we have seen many progress uh, in the past years. We have uh, similarities in the political system, uh, culture, uh, traditional cultural entities, and also uh, other fields. So I think uh, after, uh, during this visit, two, two countries' top leaders will uh, 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 have a very uh, deep and uh, friendly discussion on bilateral relations, and also including uh, two party relations. Uh, and uh, uh, the two countries' uh, top leaders will uh, guide uh, the future relations development. Now, of course, in Vietnam politics, there's a balance uh, among different uh, parts of the government and also of the uh, Communist Party of Vietnam. What do you make of the role of the party secretary uh, in the Vietnamese politics and his uh, immediate uh, visit to China? What does that mean from your perspective? Uh, indeed. Uh, the general secretary is very important uh, within the Vietnamese uh, socialist uh, system. He is seen to be the top leader within the party. And in fact, the party is very much uh, in charge of the country uh, in parallel with the government. And therefore, uh, his uh, visit is very symbolically uh, rich uh, for many reasons. Uh, the first reason is that uh, he is seen to be the first leader to visit uh, China within ASEAN. And so uh, this is symbolically rich, especially in East Asian political culture, which uh, many consider to be high context culture, where symbolism is very, very important. Mm. Uh, economically, it is also very important because uh, Vietnam uh, is China's sixth largest uh, trading partner, and it is the largest trading partner within ASEAN. And ASEAN itself is now the largest trading partner for China. And so you can see that uh, both symbolically as well as uh, concretely in economic terms, uh, the uh, relationship between two countries are very important. Uh, therefore, the visit is extremely important. On top of that, uh, uh, General Secretary uh, Trong uh, has not uh, visited a foreign country since uh, taking power in 2021. And uh, also uh, due to personal health, uh, he has not gone overseas since 2019. Uh, so this is uh, even more uh, significant uh, in terms of personal diplomacy between top leaders, which is always very important in East Asia because 
personal relationship and networking is considered to be a very important part of East Asian culture, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, requires face-to-face -face, uh, diplomacy. And since this face-to-face -face diplomacy is first taking place in the post-pandemic slash endemic situation, uh, it makes it even more significant for other ASEAN leaders uh, to look at this uh, sort of a visit as uh, the first uh, post uh, National Congress uh, of uh, China's uh, uh, event, uh, where uh, the uh, top yeah. leader in China is communicating with an important leader uh, within uh, ASEAN. Let's talk about trade and economic side of the story as well. Uh, for some time, Vietnam has been regarded as one of the biggest business partner among ASEAN countries with China. Professor Song, where is that relationship right now, particularly during the past few years, there were disruptions of uh, global supply chains and the role of Vietnam is very much at the center of tension for many. Uh, bilateral trade volume last year uh, was uh, uh, over uh, 230 uh, billion US dollars. It was the largest uh, uh, trading partner in ASEAN countries with China. And also about the investment uh, figure. Uh, until uh, the, the end of last year, uh, China's uh, FDI uh, to Vietnam was about 20 uh, billion US dollars. It is also a huge number. So I think uh, uh, in the past several years, uh, China, both China and Vietnam overcome uh, so many challenges. We can see that uh, both uh, the bilateral trade and the economic cooperation has maintained a very uh, robust momentum uh, in the past several years. I think uh, also uh, during this uh, uh, top leaders uh, talks, uh, uh, the two top leaders will also discuss the uh, bilateral trade uh, cooperation and also the total economic cooperation. What do you make of the current stage of China-Vietnam economic and trade ties? What is the role of Vietnam in the regional supply chain and also among ASEAN economies to the global supply chain? Yes, uh, the uh, nickname for uh, Vietnam within the region and outside the region is known as the Little Dragon. Uh, it is the Little Dragon that is positioned uh, centrally within three very important uh, economic uh, region. One would be uh, China, which in purchasing power parity is the largest economy in the world. And in nominal parity, some say uh, would be uh, the largest uh, potentially uh, within the next uh, decade. Uh, it is also positioned with, uh, within uh, ASEAN, uh, which is uh, the growing block, uh, trade block in the world. And one of the largest economy in the world, if you take it collectively, at the same time, it is also a supply chain in the plus one strategy of the West. Uh, therefore, it is now central within these three uh, economic entities, and uh, they uh, would like to uh, sort of uh, be uh, the conduit uh, in terms of supply chain uh, between the three and uh, position themselves strategically in supplying uh, subcomponents, goods, products, commodities uh, to all three uh, entities. And in this sense, uh, that means that uh, Vietnam is in a very good position. And therefore, uh, many uh, know that it has been uh, experiencing uh, economic boom for the last uh, few years and a housing boom at that, uh, in, in that way. So it is likely to become a very important central node of the global supply chain. And uh, being the next door neighbor of uh, China, it is also going to be uh, instrumental uh, in becoming not only uh, one of the uh, manufacturers of uh, goods uh, mm -hmm. next to China, but also a growing consumer market uh, that would be uh, very important uh, for China in the near uh, and uh, present uh, future. Uh, I think uh, uh, China and uh, Vietnam relations are very good. We have make the click of cooperation to be bigger and bigger. So this will not only be, uh, benefit two countries' development, it also will benefit the regional and also the whole world de development. Talk about Belt and Road. Of course, uh, China and the ASEAN countries have been working on that, Vietnam included. Uh, for some cooperation projects, uh, uh, China and the ASEAN countries work uh, closely, uh, while uh, other projects are still nourishing. Uh, so how do you see, Mr. Song, Vietnam's role in working with China on that scene? 
Uh, now we can see that uh, there are a lot of uh, flows between the uh, uh, two countries' cooperation uh, under the BRR framework. Uh, we have, uh, say, just uh, as I said, well, we have seen uh, the big increase uh, of bilateral trade, uh, bilateral investment, and also uh, others' uh, cooperation. And also, we, we, we can see that uh, uh, both China and uh, Vietnam are talking about the uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure cooperation, uh, the transnational uh, railway or roads connection uh, uh, between the two countries. We want to see that picture. If China, Vietnam, and also ASEAN countries uh, can build more and more uh, transnational roads, railways, and uh, we can uh, promote our uh, 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 exchanges of not only for the goals and also uh, and also for the uh, people we want to see that uh, for a bright uh, future about uh, uh, china yeah. vietnam uh, cooperation what exactly do you see as the role of vietnam in the region um, among asean countries for example uh, with its relations uh, with china and with its relations with other partners of asean well, uh, Vietnam uh, is the large has the is a very powerful player within the region. It has the largest uh, standing military within Southeast Asia, and so that makes uh, ASEAN, uh, Vietnam a very powerful voice uh, within uh, uh, ASEAN. And because uh, Vietnam is a sort of a central uh, in terms of positionality, when it comes to two very important region, the first of which is the Mekong Delta region and the second of which is the SCS, the South China Sea, that makes Vietnam a very important player when it comes to regional geopolitics and security. Mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam has been very careful uh, in uh, balancing uh, its interests uh, with uh, many great powers. It does not want any conflicts with any great powers. Together with uh, ASEAN, uh, it wants to sign uh, the uh, code of conduct uh, with uh, China when it comes to South China Sea. Uh, with uh, the uh, West, uh, it has traditional security arrangements, uh, which uh, is, uh, uh, is ongoing. And so in this sense, uh, Vietnam plays a very important role uh, as a balancer, hedger uh, between uh, the great powers uh, in the world. And it can potentially play a very important role when it comes to regional peace. And we have seen that when uh, Hanoi became the second uh, summit meeting in the last uh, administration of the US, uh, when it had the meeting with uh, North Korea, uh, it was seen to be a neutral player uh, in that sense. Uh, so it's likely, it is likely to continue this mm. geopolitical role within the region. Yeah. Mr. Song, what about the security issues, for example, regarding South China Sea? I understand the COC has been signed between the two sides. How does China articulate the role of Vietnam in that regard? Uh, we noticed that uh, ASEAN uh, has uh, uh, Vietnam has expressed the positive views about the negotiation, uh, about the COC uh, negotiation. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, uh, both Vietnam and also other ASEAN, uh, uh, related other countries and China can uh, push forward the COC negotiation process uh, quickly to conclude it uh, in the near future. Mm. The upcoming months is extremely important. There are likely to be several multilateral uh, platforms on which uh, countries and economies will discuss important issues of our evolving world. ASEAN, the East Asia Summit, uh, G20, as well as wrapped up by APEC. So every part of this, it seems that uh, uh, Vietnam will be a player except the G20. So, uh, Mr. Lim, what do you see this visit could also provide us with hints about the directions of future events and uh, discussion topics? Well, uh, before the uh, 20th uh, Party Congress, uh, many countries, including uh, ASEAN, have been watching uh, what would the China's foreign policy be after the 20th Party Congress? And this uh, visit shows that uh, there is a desire uh, between uh, Vietnam and uh, China uh, to forge a relationship that is positive for the region. And therefore, being uh, Vietnam being a very important multilateral player uh, with uh, both uh, China and its regional schemes, 
as well as an important player with the West in their regional scheme, uh, Vietnam can possibly be a very important uh, pathfinder or intermediary uh, between the two regions. And uh, in this sense, uh, Vietnam uh, having a booming economy, and more and more importantly, uh, Vietnam is one of the countries within East Asia that has a demographic growth that is healthy. And so it is its population, its potential consumer market is also likely to grow larger, which means uh, proportionately the economic, the political economic role that it plays uh, will also go, uh, will also increase. And this uh, makes it, uh, puts it in a very good position uh, to, uh, to be in a uh, region where some of the mature economies are aging. And therefore, uh, and, and also the other thing that is very important that must not be missed out is that we are entering the last leg of the pandemic and slowly transitioning to an endemic. And therefore, uh, many countries are positioning themselves for post-pandemic economic growth. And Vietnam, in this sense, plays a very important role because of its supply chain positionality that is quite central within the global supply chain. Since uh, China and Vietnam has a very good uh, uh, nego uh, 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 exchange about the regional and the world issues, it will be helpful uh, for uh, both China and ASEAN to uh, join the, uh, the very important uh, three meetings uh, next month. And also, I think uh, uh, this will also uh, be helpful uh, the smooth development of the two important uh, uh, summit meetings uh, in this region. It will be helpful ASEAN to play uh, the central role in uh, the regional cooperation and also be benefit to, to benefit the uh, world's peaceful and uh, peace and development. So, Lim Tim Wai, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us.